a snake wrangler completely randomly and by chance. Uh, I was doing a mixture of modeling and tutoring K through 12 students and on my way home almost ran over a rattlesnake and I didn't want it to die in the road so I pulled over, gave it a little poke and off it went. And I thought that could be a really cool job if no one does it already. So I did some online research, no one did it. Uh, the protocol was to kill them and I thought well that's pretty messed up. So let's just become a snake wrangler. Here we are now. Here we have a speckled rattlesnake. They're the most common rattlesnake we have out here in this desert because they blend in with the rocks. And as you can see, we have a lot of rocks. So this species is found very commonly and it does have a lot of accidental bites. As people are climbing on the rocks and when you're climbing up and up and up and up, you never know what's creeping up there. And if that snake's not moving and you're just having a good time, you're walking around, you're talking to friends, you're not going to see this snake. So you got to be really careful, especially rock climbers and children if you're playing on the rocks. You're a sweet angel, aren't you? Getting into the snake world as a woman when it was primarily dominated by men uh, in, in any field is going to be a little difficult. And by a little, I mean immensely difficult. Uh, any step forward I tried to take, there were 10 men telling me to take that step back and take more of one step back. And it just drove me even, even harder to prove that it doesn't matter what's in your pants. Uh, anyone could be a good snake wrangler if you want to help. So I ignored the threats, I ignored the hate comments and just kept working with the snakes and now no one says that stuff to me because they know I will put them in their place over it. In any field of work, uh, you're going to have a lot of risk in the first five years doing anything, especially if you're working with venomous animals. And so to not have a bite in the first five years, uh, especially doing what I do, wild captures, uh, is, is rare in, in the snake world to just not have any close encounters or bites. And now that I'm past that mark, every year is a uh, just better, better for my statistics. Of, uh, you don't have to be bitten if you do it right. When I was modeling, it was more so it's just a side job. Um, I lived in the Bay Area and it was extremely expensive. Um, I worked at a golf course as the beer cart girl. I would tutor kids, um, but the modeling, you know, it would be a good paycheck every once in a while. Um, if I could fit into a certain corset, if I could fit into a certain size of lingerie, bikini, whatever it was, um, it was usually because of my size or my, my tattoos that I got hired for modeling, but it was never a passion. It was just always, nothing really felt like it was meant for me until, until I got into the snakes and everything was just for, as a job. It felt necessary, felt like a stepping stone. Um, and even though now I get a lot of modeling offers, it's still not like a passion. And if I can blend snakes in modeling though, yes. And so becoming a desert wrangler from being like a San Francisco model, so to speak. Uh, you, you, you could have told me then, I would have said, you're absolutely nuts. That will never happen. There's no way I'm gonna move to the desert and become a snake wrangler. And um, yeah, just I didn't expect any of this at all. If I had one dollar for every snake penis joke, I'd be a millionaire. A millionaire, I wouldn't have to do this anymore. I'd be done. <sighs> And you were saying to us that uh, people suggest that you start an OnlyFangs. OnlyFangs. Just me, boobs, and snakes. But that's never going to happen, so take it off the table. Well, I've had offers. I have had porn offers, nude modeling offers. I've had every offer under the sun. But if it's not what I want to do, I'm not going to do it. No one can convince me. No one could pay me. And I think that's what you just kind of have to really stick to, is never doing something you don't want to do. Because then you're just going to go into that where you're, you're not yourself anymore. It's not about the animals anymore. And I don't want it to be about me. I've never wanted it to be about me. I just want it to be on the snakes. So anything like that is just more me focused. And I'd rather, I'm like, okay, you can look at me, but look at this snake too. And so only thanks.
<laughs> I have literally done it naked. Um, one of my best posts is I decided to put on a snake print bikini, moved out a rattlesnake pose with it, and I said, all that macho BS is exactly that. Because if I can do it weighing 100 pounds naked, anyone can do it. First rattlesnake call wasn't actually a call at all. Um, I saw someone posted on Facebook saying there's a rattlesnake in my yard, what do I do? And the only snake I had ever seen was that rattlesnake in the road that I poked. And I remember looking around my yard and there was a big metal rod and I found a Home Depot bucket. And I'm like, how hard can it be? So I commented, I said, can you give me a chance to save it? Cause I started scrolling and out of like the 30 comments, 29 of them said, kill it. And I'm like, the violence, you know, I'm just, the world is so violent and, and that really made me sad. And I'm like, I'll, I'll come get it. And she gave me that chance. Cause thank God that one woman wanted to save it. And she ignored the 29 comments and she accepted the comment from a 23 year old who had no experience, but a stick in a bucket to go help. And she, I, I wish I could find her again. Cause she was like that pivotal moment of that people did want to change. So I'm going to help that change. Over the years of snake wrangling, I have discovered that there is a lot of uh, pressure for me to talk to people and hear their stories and hear their traumas and people talk to me a lot and I didn't really anticipate that. I thought I could go get the snake, leave. And especially during the COVID years, um, I dealt with just a lot of people that were afraid of everything. And they weren't talking to a lot of people. So that was a year of um, intense conversations and I felt like people's therapist. And over the years, I, I do feel more like that. Like people just trust me, they confide in me. And the, the people aspect has ended up being so much work and it's great because I get to help people with their fear. Um, I love helping anyone have a calmed nervous system because life is scary enough. We don't have to add more to it. Uh, but yeah, trying to decrease fear and elevated people and angry people, um, it's very challenging. And I absolutely have days where I come home and just cry because I've heard so much that day or you know i just feel bad that people are living in so much fear over something they don't need to be in fear of and so the snakes are the easiest part of the job and um, that's that's a big reason why i don't do more with people because just on the daily calls it's it's a lot a lot of people my least favorite part about being a 24 7 year-round snake wrangler is the lack of routine um, i'm someone who personally would love to go to bed at eight o'clock every night have my coffee in the morning, be as routine as possible. I love that. Um, but I'll get calls from people doing mushrooms at midnight, partying, and then I get that call, go home for two hours, and I get the 3.30 a.m. Olympic runner who got up really early and found one. And so I have no routine, no, uh, I have left my birthday party five years in a row. I, I pick up and leave anywhere. I don't care who I'm with. Uh, I mean, if my grandpa's in the hospital, I'm going to stay with him. But that's pretty much the only thing that is going to keep me from leaving wherever I am. And everyone knows that about me. I've also lost a good amount of friends um, because I just, I leave. I'm like, got a snake call, bye. Or I have too many snake things to do and, you know, eight months will go by and I haven't hung out with one friend because I'm moving snakes every day. I'm sleeping, I'm just trying to work and I have no time and people will take that personally and I'm like if you don't understand I'm about me snakes and so yeah dating friends um, it conflicts big time and so after you know now that I've been recently single uh, since last year uh, I haven't even really thought about the dating world to be honest uh, it's been a while and that scares me <laughs> Dating is way scarier than wrangling rattlesnakes, so we'll see where that world goes.